Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's the technophile edition of the program, and it's time for us to take a look at what's on the headlines of some national dailies. We begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. The Punch newspaper this morning leads with Tinubu promises tough decisions. NLC demands new retirement age. There you have it, Tinubu promising that pre president-elect uh, that there will be tough decisions taken, even as he promised that um, Nigerians will be given living wage, not minimum wage. So we have some riders there. Labor recommends 65 years retirement age, 40 years length of service. And the second rider... President-elect seeks understanding, says hard decisions coming soon. That's the headline, the major headline on the Patch newspaper. And on top you have sub-headlines, uh, which has Chris Ngige's picture there, and Nad fumes as Ngige condemns doctor's entitlement mentality. The next sub-headline there, please DSS INEC joint panel invites suspended Adamawa wreck. And the third sub headline subsidy, salary payment unlikely after June, says Obaseki. <laughs> salary payment unlikely after June, says Obaseki. Okay, going down on still on the Punch newspaper, you, you see a picture there of vehicles swimming. <laughs> vehicle swimming as the road is flooded, motorists stranded as flood takes over Lagos Ibadan Express Long Bridge. Going down from that picture, you see Sudan, Egypt opens border for stranded Nigerians. You find the details of that story on page five. You also have Lawless Never Ratings Brutalized Ogun Man Over Parking Space. You find details of that on pages 4 and 5. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, you see uh, Senate Presidency. Akpabio meets Buhari Defense Ambition. Well, that's it on the Punch newspaper. Let's move to the Nation newspaper and see what is on the headline. Well, the, punch, the nation newspaper leads with pay rise coming for health workers, lecturers, others. Pay rise coming for health workers, lecturers, others. On top of the headline, you have the subheadlines, which has a picture of the finance minister, the minister for national planning and budget, Nigeria's. Forex reserves lose $1.82 billion. You also have on that newspaper, The Nation, government officials suspended over alleged salary padding. Details of that you find on page 5. Also on page five, you find jam to release UTME results today. So those who sat for jam or parents whose words or children sat for jam uh, will be very anxious today as the results come out. All right, let's move away from the nation newspaper to the Daily Trust, which leads with, I'll give you living wage, Tinubu promises workers. I'll give you a living wage that's coming from the president-elect in the wake of Workers' Day, which took place yesterday. And on top of that headline, you have sub-headlines. Egypt opens borders for Nigerians fleeing Sudan. You find that on page 7. Cancer care, Nigeria bans importation of indominidals. You find details of that on page 14. And Dangote commits over 9.2 trillion naira to Pan-African investments. 
and details of that will be found on page 19 of the Daily Trust. And from the Daily Trust, we'll move over to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with workers demand better pay amid subsidy debt concerns. And details of that will be on page 6. If you're grabbing the Guardian newspaper, you go to page 6 for details of that headline. And going down on the Guardian, the Guardian newspaper, you have WHO raises a lot as high risk season for meningitis, others set in. You have telecom operators reject proposed supervision of NITDA. And you have faces of some uh, popular people there. Pastor Kwaju. So, yeah, Pastor Kwaju. And uh, two other stakeholders hail youth hustling uh, spirits advocate innovation to curb unemployment. And right down there on the Guardian newspaper, I have NAVDAC begins probe on safety of Indomie noodles today, says DG. A new Emirate Council head to stay, Ganduje tells Kwan Kwaso. All right, so those are the headlines. And just as we do it on the breakfast, we won't just stop there. We'll be having our guest join us to take a look at some of these headlines to find out the reasons behind them and uh, other deeper issues that can be taken from the headlines. And we have as our guest to do that this morning on Tuesday. Chris Kendewando is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but he is in Lagos at the moment as we speak. Chris Kende, welcome to you. Good morning. Good morning, nice to have you this morning. Nice to meet you this morning. Good morning, Nigerians. But you're looking as if you're going for an arbitration this morning, Chris. Are you going for an arbitration after this interview? Work has started. Yesterday was a public holiday. We must make a, 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 an ending this morning, so I'm ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's just jump right into it. Let's go to the Punch newspaper, where Tinubu promises top decisions and NLC demanding new retirement age. Let's start with that. Well, um, yesterday was made day, and the workers day, and it's marked as workers day across the globe. Uh, it is set aside to honor and celebrate uh, workers uh, who on a daily basis uh, uh, try to make a living and also contribute to their own um, and make their contribution to national wealth. And so yesterday was our day and the Nigeria um, be a signatory to that uh, treaty also celebrated uh, celebrated in Nigeria across the 36 state of the situation that uh, allowed the government to also make promises and the federal government also make promises and labor to continue to demand for better wages and welfare for uh, their workers. So so it was. And then there are a lot of highlights, just as rightly pointed out by most of the national newspapers. Um, uh, the president elect uh, promising that uh, it's going to be a Dorado for workers when it takes over. And uh, we hope it's going to be that. And uh, because as it is currently, uh, the take-home pay of workers cannot even take them to the bus stop, mm -hmm. less of taking them home. So, with a minimum wage of about 30,000 naira, which most states are not paying, the 30,000 naira minimum wage month is just barely less than $50 uh, if converted to dollars. And that is what some uh, people earn uh, in other countries on a daily, more than what they earn daily in other countries. So, uh, we, that we having that as minimum wage for a month for certain years, because that shows you uh, the level of poverty in Nigeria. And with a country with over 133 million Nigerians, over close to about 60 to 70 percent of our people below poverty line, uh, based by the current um, the statistic released by the World Bank. Uh, so, it's a big problem for us. Then, uh, added to that is the high unemployment rate um, that is um, our vast is all over Nigeria, and um, where you see graduates, um, we are pushing our graduates on a daily basis, but there's nothing, nothing for them to do. 
we can hardly employ up to 10% of what we produce our graduates on the university, which is why you see high rate of unemployment uh, in the country. And that in itself has a real effect. Um, perhaps uh, insecurity, people getting into crime, is because they have nothing to do. So uh, that is the situation we find ourselves. So I hope that the coming government will be able to live up to its promises and making life not only better for workers, but every Nigerian. But there are also indices that came up, as oh. I just as rightly mentioned. The NLC is saying that um, the retirement age for civil servants will be increased from 60 to 65. Well, um, to be able to do that, that means you have to um, send a bill to the National Assembly, whether they can send a, a bill to the National Assembly or to be an executive bill. That is uh, currently the uh, provision of the 1990. My constitution has amended. It is 60 years retirement, 35 years service. That is what it is. Um, which other ones? Um, there but, look, talking also... about Chris, talking about uh, NLC demanding new retirement age and and, and comparing it with what happened in France. The yes. new the retirement yeah, age has caused serious problems. There. France, France, France wants their own to be reduced, mm -hmm. but in Nigeria we want ours to be increased. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, the government has just increased theirs to 65, uh, 65 years, and there have been protests for over 19 weeks now in France where they say reduce it. We don't want to, don't increase it any longer. But here, our old people are saying that uh, they want it to increase. At 60, I think uh, every man should be able to. But, but let's look at the performance of civil servants, even as we seek for improvement of their welfare. How would you rate civil servants in Nigeria, Chris? Nigerian civil servants are one of its productive, is to a large extent. But when you look at what happened in, in most of the ministries and parastatals, um, federal and state, you also see that the dignity of labor is there and commitment is not there. Go to most of our ministries, we see that the offices are always empty. Uh, civil servants, most of them don't come to work. At the end of it, all they want to uh, end their salary. Some come and instead of engaging, going to work, they do their own private things, selling and buying and selling of things. But I think that is a factor of one, discipline, and two, inability for us to be able to pay the necessary wages that can keep them in the office. So, uh, until we're able to do the need to continue to have the level of civil servants, civil service we have. And um, also look at their welfare, also their retirement payment. You see that most civil servants, even those within the military, when they retire, they hardly get their uh, pension. And that is also a big problem. That brings a lot of corruption. That makes it possible for people, when they are there, they try as much as possible to steal and grab as much as they can. So that because they know that when they retire, hmm. their uh, gratuities and pension may not be paid. But that is the type of uh, civil servants uh, or civil service we have in Nigeria. And the health sector, uh, Chris Ngige, uh, Minister of Labor, is saying that uh, uh, he's accusing them of entitlement mentality. Do you share his thoughts? Do you think our health know. workers have uh, been demanding too much or that they have not even been given enough attention as they should? I don't know what he meant by uh, self-entitlement. He's a medical doctor, so you should know. When he was practicing, how much was he in? So why will I accuse anybody of it? These are professionals. Um, um, he has said several things in the past that he seemed to be singing a new tune because he had barely a few days to live as a minister, uh, which one of them is the where he disagreed with the Bill being presented at the House of Representatives, where medical practitioners are going to be restrained for five years um, after the months have been graduated from school from traveling abroad. That in itself uh, is against the, uh, the Constitution. 1999 Constitution has amended on free movement, uh, movement, association of awareness. So nobody can stop anybody from moving forward. If I decide to go anywhere after my graduation, it's none of your business. We are not the one that trained me in school, so we are not the one that paid my fees. Why should you stop me from moving out? If you are providing the necessary environment, you don't even need to tell me to. So um, that bill, I personally think that it's just uh, there are just those in the House of Representatives or those that present that bill don't, don't seem it's uh, just self uh, self seeking for me. They, they stop. Then we should also present bill. 
that will stop them from sending their children abroad to school. Most of their children are abroad. Um, that is why they don't give, they don't get themselves consigned with the welfare of Nigerian students. That is why you see us going on strike for one year and nobody is doing anything about it. If they are saying that they want to stop uh, graduate um, medical graduates uh, from moving out after until five years, of then we also stop them from. We should also present our own bill that we stop them from seeking medical uh, attention uh, abroad as they are doing now, uh, oh. medical tourism. Yeah, so, you, you, you know, Chris, I, I, I hear you what you're saying. What you're saying is quite valid, uh, especially with regards to their right to either staying or going. But on the flip side, there are those who would also ask, who are those that would give back to Nigeria? If Nigeria yeah. trains you... Uh, some have said uh, when you compare university education with, with, with Nigeria and abroad, you would find that it is actually relatively cheaper, a lot cheaper to study here in Nigeria. And so you get uh, this education in Nigeria. You don't stay behind to give back and you're agitating to leave. Menu, Nigeria did not train them. Their parents trained them. So saying that Nigerian trained them, did they pay their, did they pay their school fees? It is only when you give scholarship that you can be able to search it. If you give me scholarship, federal government scholarship or state, state government scholarship to study in Nigeria, that you can now say, okay, in the course of that, we have, you know, the law, that's what we call valid contract. Valid contract is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. So if you give me, uh, in, in the course of giving me scholarship, you say, I should sign, I should please sign that. We are going to train you, but within the, after training, you give me scholarship. Within the period of five years, you will remain in Nigeria to contribute to the development of Nigeria. We sign up on that contract. I am bad by that contract. But that my parents suffered, those going to farm, those trading, selling tomatoes and everything, suffered for me to go to school. Then after going to school, you say, I must stay here in the Nigeria. It is my personal way. If I want to stay, I stay. Those that will stay, will stay. Those that don't want to stay, will not stay. So nothing, and as I said, Nothing stops any Nigerian, based on the current constitution, from moving to any part of the world where he feels that they can find a living or a living. You cannot do that. Except that law is amended. They are, whatever they are doing is totally Nigeria did not train them. It is only when you give a scholarship or you give a scholarship to study that you cannot dictate to how they will to move. But for now, don't forget the same minister, the same minister some years back, said that we have more than enough doctors in this country that anybody that wants to go should go. This same person, he said it, mm. the, 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 the strike of the doctors. So what are we talking about? So um, so we have more than enough, as they said. So but the, now the, the resident doctors have issued a two-week um, ultimatum notice that they will soon go on strike. Government signed agreement with its doctors. The government signed agreement with the labor union. The government signed agreement with none, none of them, um, with um, ASU, sorry. None of them have been implemented. And you see that people shouldn't go on strike or they should not. Anybody, it's a free country and it's a full movement for everyone. All right. Well spoken, Chris. Let's move on to Daily Trust, which also leads with, I'll give you a living wage. Uh, Tinubu promises worker. Of course, the, uh, the aftermath of the celebration yesterday is expected that we have uh, almost all the headlines leading with this topic. So Tinubu here promising living wage. You've spoken very well in that regard. But let's go up to a subheading here, which talks about Indomie noodles. Council Scare, Nigeria bans importation of Indomie noodles. I'm sure you saw that report that um, revealed some content in some Indomie produced in, I think, is it Korea or somewhere? And I'm sh it was after that that the Nigerian uh, NAVDAC decided to also investigate the Indomie noodles we have here. Let's have your take on this. Yeah, it is um, actually it was Taiwan and Malaysia that banned um, the, the Indomie, noodle, Indomie noodles, um, especially I think there are about 13 variants, but the particular one in question is that one, chicken flavor Indomie, and the fact that there are certain substances in it that uh, contains um, elements, a substance that um, causes cancer. So for that, it has been banned uh, in uh, Malaysia and Taiwan, I think. And um, so Nigeria is always taking some precaution, uh, precaution in trying to make sure that uh, uh, we don't have that here. And what they stated also is that they will start the process of testing 
um, those Indomie uh, products uh, from today to see where necessary, if their, that claim is substantiated, then they have to put a stop to it. One is importation. I, I believe that we have modules. Uh, you know the issue that uh, without giving uh, any type of um, marketing uh, to any product. You know, in, in Nigeria, we have this uh, of once a product is popular, that is, it becomes a generic name for every other day. We yeah. have modules. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are yes. modules. Yeah. That, that's there. So, when people say Indomie noodles, is it, Indomie noodles is a particular brand. Mm -hmm. But we have several noodles in Nigeria. So, um, for but in this, this case, in this case, this one is talking about Indomie noodles. That is what I'm saying. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, it's Indomie specific. So that people don't just start saying that, oh, now that can ban uh, in noodles. noodles. And that means, uh, hey, you, you know the way we say, it's like, you want to take me now, without giving any advantage, you now say, oh, I, I want to drink Coke, even when they are, you are getting Pepsi. Oh, it's Pepsi that you want to take everything yeah. else. So that is, know, yeah. it is Indomie noodles. And uh, the, what the Nata can say that, for now, I thought that for me, personally, I thought that that Indomie noodles is being produced uh, locally in Nigeria. Now I'm hearing that we used to have some importation as well. So what they have stopped is the importation of further, of, uh, further importation of Indomie noodles until they must have carried out all these tests and make sure that uh, some of these conferences that have been that is not uh, Chris, that is what it is. Yeah, one thing that hit me when the NAVDAC said they were going to start testing or investigating it is that did we have to wait? Did we have to wait till now? No, that, well, well, no, the news broke uh, about less than a week ago. It, it broke about less than a week. I think it's about, uh, it was the cable uh, online uh, platform that broke down news, uh, which has several online publications and the mainstream publications. So I don't think it's all good. But don't forget that this is not the first time. In about a year or two ago, you also remember that I was all this Hula uh, Balu about um, Indomie too. At the point, some the company came out to say that it, some people want to demarcate it because of its uh, leadership in the market. But Indomie as it is, or uh, something food, they call themselves. I also come out to uh, issue a statement that uh, it is not true, and also, but let us have not that job, and we'll be able to see the final result of what they have done. Just a precaution. So, if you have a child, I know my children. That is, they won't eat any other. They won't eat it, but they won't eat that. It's Indomie every time. So let us be precautious. The Indomie generation. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> the Indomie generation, right? Exactly. You know, so they are different from <laughs> our generation. We are just different from our own generation. They even prefer Indomie before rice. So even our two lazy adults, that is what they eat because they can. It's something you can do within one minute. Two I remember minutes. when I was in the US, <laughs> as, as quickly as possible, that is what we eat. But mm. it's just some kind of precaution for now. All right, let's go to Egypt. Egypt has opened its borders for our people who are there, who have been able to, well, who have been able to move from Sudan. So we're hearing from the headlines that Egypt has opened the borders for Nigerians fleeing Sudan. Yes, Midcom came out with that tweet yesterday that finally that Egypt has opened its border to allow Nigerians um, um, fleeing Sudan to come into the country so that to enable them to be uplifted to Nigeria. You know, it has been a problem for some time uh, because they left, um, they left um, uh, Sudan and some of them got stuck. Um, in the desert, in fact, the report coming this morning, not yet verified, is that one of the buses uh, conveying the evacuees caught fire in the desert, and I uh, don't know whether there was any injury. Oh. And it come out, not come out to verify that or clarify that. But that is a problem now. And uh, so, um, finally, Egypt, uh, it, it, at the point, Egypt was allowing um, citizens of other countries to migrate to pass through their country, but part of Nigerians we are not allowed um, because they are saying that some of them don't have valid papers and you seek valid paper for somebody that is running away from war. If I have a paper and they have a passport and my house was even bombarded, at times you don't even need to start looking for it, you just mm -hmm. run out of the house for safety. So this is not the time for all this unnecessary If they said they're from Nigeria, allow them what you need to do is just uh, Make sure that they follow the path to the airport where they will be queried down to their country. Don't, don't allow them into the towns or into the into the city, and that is what. So I think um, uh, diplomatic 
talks, relationship has been to prepare. Probably our NITCOM and uh, um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have been to put the input and they allowed them to the. But why, 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 why do you think, to... Chris? Why do you think Nigeria? Because they also experience similar thing in Ethiopia. Why do you think Nigerians well, keep experiencing this? Well, uh, well, it is uh, one. It is one. Our people have to be very uh, thoughtful and thoughtful. The way some of our citizens behave in this most of these countries give so much of the desire. So, and that is a, a factor. And that is why we say, you know, in my place, uh, in my village, you know, go in Imo State. They say, "Ufuakar Tamman Uzuahon." What it means that once one finger touches red oil. Some, it shows the other fingers. Yeah. That is what happened. Most of our people don't behave in the way and manner that we do today. Some of them behave and do certain things that are very, very inimical to the um, to the laws of those lands. So they are very, very skeptical about that. that is one. Two is the fact that we have a very large population, the largest population of black people in the world. So most people that are not even Nigerians come to Nigerians when they travel abroad. And when they commit crimes, they alluded that to. Um, to Nigeria. So, and also, our people have a way of breaking the law. So, most often than not, this happens. Then, totally, then, my personal opinion, which we have also plenty of this country, they, 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 they jealous Nigeria. They, they jealous us. Because, not so with the flesh. Nigeria, mm, they flesh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, okay, yes, they jealous us big time. That's why we go to start Africa. They say that we are running after their women to start killing us and rest of them. They cannot even take care of their own women. So, but that is just on the flip side. Yeah. But the fact that most often than not, um, these countries um, are very skeptical because of the kind of news they hear about us. I think what we need to do, we do, should do a lot of diplomacy and also one of our people to try to behave in a way and manner that. It's not only in Ethiopia. Dubai, for a long time, banned Nigerians from coming to their country. We have had issues in South Africa. We have had issues in so many, even Ghana, our neighboring country, at a point, we are having issues with Ghana, just Ghana. Ghana. That a few years ago, they were Ghana. Mm. I Ghana. Ghana, a few years ago, that we are shouting Ghana must go. Ghana must now go. Now they were giving us, yes. Telling Nigerians issues. to leave. It's, it's, it's really very, um, it's a very sad development. But let's it move is. on, especially since today is uh, Technophile Tuesday, to this uh, sub-topic here, sub uh, a headline here, Telecom Operations Operators Reject Proposed Supervision by NITDA. What do you make of that? Right. Why are they rejecting well, the supervision? Well, uh, I think the, they might have their reason, but we have to know that we have a regulatory body already. NCC is the regulatory body. So all this unnecessary, uh, what we call middle sum interloper in law, uh, might not be necessary. If, if you have any problem, um, the right place to go to is um, NCC. And NCC are doing a very, very wonderful job at that. So. Um, I don't know why NTAT or whatever they want to get involved with that, but that can be looked into that kind of process. If they have any reservation about that. It's just like asking in broadcasting uh, as a journalist, I know that they have the NBC, who is the regulatory body uh, for that. They also have on the IBAN and other things. We have any, uh, we also have our own unions. So, yes. Beth, for me, is anything concerning the telecom sector, that NCC to be in charge. And I think I don't think they will be able to approach that role as and but let us also in the course since we're talking IT, let us use this opportunity to also um, salute uh, an icon in the personal doctor, Mike Adenuga of Blue, who turned 70. You know we all know how he revolutionized the GSM uh, industry in Nigeria. Especially Definitely. when so, especially when the big so called big two they are saying that our second building was necessary. He came in and uh, was able to break the barrier. So Mending and so many other Nigerians that are making us happy through their entrepreneurship and also the development of Nigerians in their thousands. So, finally, before we go, let's look at this um, one from the WHO, which has issued a uh, lot as high risk season for meningitis, others set in. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very big. Uh, um, nice one. Don't forget that we have we are in the rainy season, mm -hmm. and also apart from that, we should also warn Nigerians. I think the NMA uh, and the NCA have been warning that serious rainfall. Um, uh, may not in my area yes, there are so much rainstorm that some um, uh, houses we are roofs we are damaged and some of them. And this is just the beginning. You know, most often than not, when we are warned about this issue of uh, rain, Nigerians don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. I know that the state government sent sent out a warning alert. 
there are people living in areas like Arepu uh, uh, and the rest of them should try to move into the upland. And when I hear that, say people should move upland, so they should leave their house where they're going to. So it's a problem. But there is serious alert about um, that we're going to have serious flooding in, like, across Nigeria. And even lightning. Yes, lightning. Yes, lightning too. And uh, so we should be very careful. But the issue of meningitis, I think we should take that seriously. Just as we the one about malaria, you know, last week we spoke about malaria. We said that over 200,000 people die from malaria on a yearly basis in Nigeria. So there are so many diseases that Nigeria has a person to, and we don't drop the ball. We know how much we, play, uh, we, we, we spent on COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, such money, I believe, that we spend there can channel to other areas of health so that Nigerians can have the best of health. So we this period. Thank you so much. Chris Kane Wando, for your time. It's always very interesting when you, we have you as our guest taking a look at Off the Press. Kende Mwandu is a member of Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but he is joining us, or he joined us here uh, in Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you so much, Chris. We'll see you again Thank on you. Tuesday. Thank you very much, Dublu. Wonderful day ahead. All Bye. Right. Well, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break to come back uh, to jump into our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>